Yeah, welcome to Sports uh, Talk Sports. Yeah, almost saying sports ride. Yeah, you're in for a sports uh, ride, definitely. But we're talking sports uh, this morning on Global Television. And I am the king of sports, Anthony Momodi, be my name. And I'm ready to take you into a very, very interesting sports ride. We'll be looking at very interesting stories making the rounds in the exciting world of sports. Uh, you're in the right place. And take that to the bank, tell them the king of sports. I uh, told you so. All right, uh, uh, we'll be talking tennis boxing, football, and definitely the UEFA Champions League. We'll also be talking transfer matters on today's edition. But one big story is one man who is the 2023 African Footballer of the Year. And your guess is as good as mine. No other person but the man who at least the attack for the Super Eagles of Nigeria. He wears jersey number nine. He has uh, his, his hair is colored uh, white or milk color, depending on what color you, you prefer. And he plies his trade in Italy. I guess you know the man I'm talking about now, his name, Victor Oshibe. Yes, he's the first big person we will be talking about on today's edition of the program, Talk Sport. All right, uh, just to let the cat out of the bag, I have as a guest today, one of the just upcoming and finest coaches uh, when it comes to the youth category. He is, his job is on earning uh, stars for the Golden Inglet of Nigeria and for the 20 Premier League club sites in the country. He's not a person for Rafael Onamba. He is the head coach of Refined Nugget Football Club right here in the Federal Capital Territory. Uh, Onamba, nice to have you in the studios. It's a pleasure to be here, Tony. All right, uh, just to let you know that one of his players uh, was uh, taken outside the shores of Nigeria. It tells you the quality he brings to the fore. All right, uh, let's begin the big story. We're taking you to, oh, we're taking to Stamford Bridge. That's where our first big story is going to be coming from. And uh, the man uh, in the news this morning is not a person, but super ego striker Victor Oshime is in the news. Uh, Chelsea and Arsenal have been dealt a major transfer blow as. Uh, the striker, striker target Victor Shime is set to sign a new contract with Napoli. The Nigerian international has scored six goals in the Serie A games this season and is set uh, to be rewarded for his good form. And at just 24 years of age, he is a key asset to Napoli after he proved to be critical in their title winning season last campaign. Uh, both Arsenal and Chelsea are reportedly in the market for a striker, especially Chelsea. Uh, who have been eyeing a January move for uh, the player. Oshime has scored an impressive 66 goals in 116 appearances for the Naples team after joining for a club record fee of 69.5 million pounds from Lille in 2020. All right, uh, 66 uh, goals in 116 appearances for Napoli. That's uh, super amazing. All right, uh, coach, let's look at... Uh, uh, Victor Shibe, likely to resign a new deal with uh, Napoli. Lots of people had said uh, it was time for him to leave Napoli and go conquer new grounds. But now he's going to sign a new contract and there's going to be a clause in his contract that says 112 million pounds is what you pay if you have to sign Victor Shime. Uh, congratulations to Victor Shime for winning the CAF award as the best player. It's been a long time in Nigeria and actually won. Yes, 24 years ago. It's been a long, long time. Yeah, we all saw it coming because he did well with um, his club, Napoli. And um, he has been in top form, you know, highest goal scorer. And above all, you know, he has been making us proud both home and abroad. Yeah, looking at his uh, contract clause, I don't think he's going to sign any contract with Napoli because he's having some internal issues. With yeah, him. but now the, the story is saying that he's likely to renew his uh, contract uh, with Napoli. Hopefully, they're going to give him bigger pay. Um, that, for is still, that is still unpending. He's likely. But have it in mind that he's also linked with Chelsea. And you heard what he said at the CAF award that his role model is Drogba. And have it that behind closed door, the likes of John Mikel Obi has been pushing him to go to Chelsea, which I believe he will go because that has been his childhood thing. Uh, but looking at others, they've got Arsenal also wanting him, Manchester United, Liverpool. Uh, what team do you think will be best for, suited for his style of play? Looking at the current uh, situation in Chelsea, I wouldn't advise our own beloved brother, Victor Shime, to go to Chelsea because Chelsea are not just the team we used to know. But I think Arsenal will have been a very good team for him to go or better stay in Liverpool. All right, uh, let's uh, hope uh, uh, 
Victor Shima will be making the right choices uh, in terms of uh, which uh, club to move up to. The fact that he has scored 66 goals in 116 games uh, tells you how uh, big a margin that player is and how big he's going to be for any team he's going to be playing for in the coming seasons. All right, uh, let's move on to the next big story. We're taking you quickly uh, to St. James's Park. Uh, that's talking about Newcastle now. Newcastle and AC Milan in the Champions League. That's what we're looking at. Newcastle, AC Milan taking, yes, that's the big story. They're so near yet so far. That's the big headline in the uh, tabloids in the UK. So near yet so far. Uh, the big story says for much of the game, as Newcastle led AC Milan, it seemed as if Eddie Howe's team uh, was heading for the last 16 of the Champions League alongside European uh, aristocracy uh, teams uh, like Bayern Munich, Real Madrid, and the new kings of the competition, Manchester City. But then, after Julian Sumption's uh, first half strike, Milan rediscovered their pace and poised equalizer through Christian Pulisic and got a winner through Nigeria's Samuel uh, Chukwe and suddenly it did not matter what happened in the match between Borussia Dortmund and PSG and suddenly the widest dreams seemed to be a little further away. Defeat men Newcastle did not even have the consolation prize of a place in the Europa League uh, like Manchester United. They had finished bottom of their group with only win to show for their adventures. Uh, how sad could this be for Newcastle? They started like a team on fire. They beat uh, PSG and all. We all thought uh, the fact that they could beat PSG and with their resounding uh, form in the English Premier League, was this a surprise? Well, actually a surprise based on the way they started. You know, I call them the underdogs. The Champions League is a game of men, is a, is a, is a league of men, and uh, the men delivered when it matters. You know, experience actually do tell on them. I wish them luck next time. Uh, well, in terms of experience, now you're talking in terms of Eddie Howe, the, the coach of Newcastle, experience in terms of the players. Yeah, I'm talking about the players. These, some of these guys are new to the league. and uh, You can't compare the experience of AC Milan with the likes of Giroud, Pulisic, some Champions League winner in the team. We can't compare both experience. We can't match both experience together. So I think experience has really played a vital role. Uh, well, well, in terms of the coach, uh, Eddie Howe, never been to Champions League, could that be a stronger factor? Now, because they've got uh, uh, Ripia and some other players who have also played in Champions League in the uh, Newcastle team. Yeah, actually, experience actually played a vital role. But I think the coach was not experienced enough because this is his first time, you know, participating in the Champions League. So I believe once he go back, so go back to his drawing board, and next time he try to look at the uh, flaws, where the errors comes from, and work on it. So that okay. next time they deliver. Uh, let's cast a um, uh, flashlight on uh, Nigerian-born uh, Samuel Chukweze, who plays for the Super Eagles. How important is this goal for Chukweze, and what does this translate to uh, the national team? Him scoring now for AC Milan, finally breaking the dock. I hope he build on on this momentum, and um, I never believe he could score because he has not been himself since he went to Milan. Unlike when he was at Villarreal, he Villarreal was always assisting and uh, you know delivering. So I think this is a good start for him, and he should keep his head up. All right, so congratulations to Nigerian born uh, Samuel Chukweze, who gave uh, the winning goal for uh, AC Milan in that game between uh, AC Milan and uh, uh, Newcastle. But for Newcastle, the fact that they didn't even get to the Europa League, wouldn't this demoralize the players and the coach and even the investors in uh, Newcastle? Because they had a lot of investment. They, they brought in a lot of players. There is light at the end of the tunnel. They should keep their head up because everyone globally, we are all proud of them because of what they have done so far. All right, uh, let's uh, still move in. Still talking about some Champions League game. Uh, we've got uh, the Champions League last 16 uh, draw probabilities. That's what we'll be looking at. Champions League last 16 uh, probabilities is the next uh, uh, talking point there. Uh, we've got uh, a computer has revealed that the draw probabilities for the Champions League last 16 with Arsenal and Manchester City potentially up against some tough opponents in the first round of the knockout. There was plenty of drama on Wednesday evening as the final round of group games uh, took place. The main action came from uh, Group F where both uh, Newcastle and Paris Saint-Germain toyed uh, to qualify for the knockouts. Uh, after taking the lead in their match against AC Milan, uh, Newcastle would ultimately suffer an agonizing defeat at St. James's Park with PSG drawing 1 1 with Bruce Dortmund at the Signal Iduna Park uh, to book their place in the knockout ahead of a 
House side. Uh, but the Parisians will now likely come up against some tough opposition in the round of 16, having finished a second in the group behind Borussia Dortmund. In fact, they are being backed uh, up uh, to come up against Manchester City uh, with Pep Guardiola side, who defeated Red Star Begui earlier this in the evening, uh, reportedly having 14.75% chance of drawing the League One champions, according to a computer created by the Reddit uh, user. Uh, City also have 14.75% probability of drawing FC Copenhagen, uh, who advance of Group A alongside Bayern Munich, while Manchester United and Galatasaray are both failing uh, to qualify for Arsenal, interestingly, uh, who booked a place uh, in the knockouts following a 6-0 win against Lons uh, last week, are uh, most likely to play Leipzig uh, with uh, the computer giving them a 20% probability of playing uh, the Bundesliga uh, side. Let's look at uh, some of these uh, pairings, uh, looking at uh, Man City likely to face uh, Dortmund and Arsenal likely to face uh, uh, other, other teams. Uh, uh, for you, what will be your, the best pairing for uh, the next round of 16? What kind of pairing would you like to see? Would you like to see Bayern, uh, Man City, or what, what pairings would be of interest to you? I would like to see Real Madrid, Man City. I would like to see... Um, Who would you want Arsenal, Arsenal to face? face? I would like to see Arsenal with, um, uh, let's say... Yeah, this thing from. Uh, I'm talking about. Uh, uh, what was the name of this? Trump? Copenhagen. No. FC Copenhagen. P A P is it PSV? I guess. PSV. Okay. P then what of PSG from France? In Papi and Co. In Dortmund, Dortmund, Borussia Dortmund with PSG. We'll make a good uh, rapper for you. Uh, for Man City, Man City. Uh, who would you want to see Man City face? City, Real Madrid. Real Madrid, then AC Milan. Anybody. <laughs> All right, I will be looking keenly to see when the draws come out, we'll get to see uh, who faces who, but uh, it's definitely going to be exciting as the draws, uh, the big teams are already uh, there, while the small teams uh, like Manchester United have fallen uh, by the wayside. Uh, so we're going to be seeing very interesting matchup when it comes. Uh, we'll take a story concerning uh, Barcelona. Royal Antwerp versus Barcelona is our next uh, talking point uh, uh, this morning as we look at uh, issues concerning the Champions League. Royal Antwerp of Belgium and uh, Barcelona. Uh, that match, uh, Barcelona did lose that game by three goes to two. Royal Antwerp versus uh, uh, Barcelona. It says that trouble that Barcelona missed out of 2.8 million euros of UEFA prize money, losing uh, their last uh, Champions League group game 3-2 to Royal Antwerp of Belgium with a sort of shambolic display that will make them the side of many teams won in Monday's draw. They top a uh, group H but signed off uh, with a dismal performance that coming uh, three days uh, after a 4-2 defeat by Girona, uh, which leaves a huge uh, doubt over Xavi's long-term future as coach. He's not been helped uh, by interference from above President Juan Laporta and Director of Football Deco are understood to have applied pressure on him to travel to Belgium with Robert Lewandowski, who he wanted uh, to rest. The pole uh, ended up uh, starting the game, and when he was replaced by 17-year-old McGoo in the 20th minute, left the teenager scored uh, with a header from a free kick. His goal made a 2-2 and looked uh, like saving the team from defeat, but there was still time for more uh, woeful defending and George uh, Ikenikena has called uh, in injury time to give uh, Royal Antwerp a well-deserved victory. This is a uh, very sad uh, uh, for Barcelona. Uh, do you think this is going to put more pressure on uh, already the future of uh, Xavi is being questioned if he has a long-term future in Barcelona? What do you think is happening to Xavi? They should give Xavi a long a chance to run the club for a long time as a coach because you know he actually came in when Barcelona were scattered and shattered you know so and you know building a team for the future it takes a whole lot it takes long time you know so they should actually give him rooms the same way Hasna gave Ateta rooms to deliver.
but uh, looking at Real Antwerp, a Belgian side beating Barcelona by three goals to two, and the fact that uh, I, I, do you think Barcelona is beginning to depend too much on a specific player? Because once it looks like Lewandowski is out injured, the team seem to not uh, be able to get their acts together. I believe the injured Lewandowski actually affected the team. And not just that, Champions League is a, is, a, is, a, is a league of men. It's not by luck or by chance for any team to qualify to that stage. So for a team like that to beat Barcelona, I think they deserve the day. Football is off and on. It wasn't, football wasn't on their side yesterday. So. Okay, let, let's look at, uh, we know that Ansu Fati, uh, who plays for Barcelona, is on loan to Brighton. Do you think it's time for him to bring back uh, Ansu Fati, especially now that uh, Lewandowski is injured? And probably bring some other players he has sent on loan. Uh, maybe that could reject uh, the team because Ansofati, you know, plays with these other players and knows them very well. I think that was a very big mistake the board of directors of Barcelona made. They shouldn't have allowed that guy to go on loan. Though we all know he's injury prone. So okay. I think they should bring him back January. Uh, do you see Barcelona letting Xavi go at the end of the season if they can't uh, probably win the La Liga? I don't see him going. He understands the in and out of the foundation of Barcelona, so I think they should give him more time and more rooms to keep working on his project. Uh, but uh, we got the news as regards uh, Laporta and the Deco's interference. Uh, do you uh, see these that? are normal things in football, you know. They need to man pressure on him for him to deliver, so it's expected. All right, uh, leaving uh, Barcelona there, we're hoping uh, Xavi will be able to put his arts together and get things uh, done. All right, uh, we'll go for a very quick break. When we return from the break, the program Talk Sport uh, continues. Stay with us. Thank you, so just joining us. We're still talking sport on global television, and uh, we're looking at uh, some fallout of matches that were played uh, yesterday in the UEFA Champions League. We've uh, looked at uh, Newcastle uh, losing to AC Milan, and uh, through the goals scored by one Nigerian striker, Samuel Chukwese, uh gave uh, AC Milan all the needed points uh, to qualify for the Champions League. We also uh, talked about uh, Victor Shime, who uh, is about to likely uh, renew his contract with Napoli with a clause of £112 million uh, pounds, uh, as a release clause uh, for uh, Victor Oshime. All right, and um, for Barcelona, not so good news for them. They lost in Belgium to Real Antwerp by three goals to two. And uh, Xavi's job is on the line uh, despite interference from Deco, the director of football, and uh, Joan Laporta, who is uh, the president of the Barcelona uh, football team. All right, uh, let's talk about uh, one team. Yes, we're talking about the defending champions of the Champions League. No other team but Manchester City. Uh, they're in the news uh, this morning. Let's look at Manchester City and Red Star Bay Grade. Uh, that's a big story there. Let's also let, try and tell in Manchester City kids uh, that this was a dead rubber game. And then uh, this was a night where the club's academy graduates shone on the, the European stage uh, with Mikael Hamilton and Oscar Bob uh, scoring the first uh, senior goals uh, to help City become the only second English team to win all six of the Champions League group matches. There was even joy uh, for Calvin Phillips who also netted his first uh, City goal with a second half uh, penalty. Guardiola side uh, had already secured a top spot in Group G ahead of the final game with Resta Begre, who were guaranteed to finish bottom. There was little at stake, uh, but this turned out uh, into an entertaining counter arm for Hamilton and Bob in night uh, to remember. Manchester City born Hamilton was 13 years old when he was one of the ball boys uh, that Guardiola instructed to help 
lift his team's intensity in 2017 by ensuring that games restart quicker. But uh, he has had to be patient for his chance uh, with the first team. Uh, let's look at Pep Guardiola. This is uh, a boy who was a, a boy boy to Pep Guardiola, but now playing for the first team of Manchester City. Uh, do you think this is what makes Pep uh, quite different and a very successful coach? Sporting talent and you know, easy them easy into the uh, first team. I call him 2017 to 2023. I call him, I used to call him the I used to use the word magnificent because um, I love his style and of his coaching method and his mode of training. He's a kind of coach that once he discovers you as a player, once he discovers that you have a great potential as a player, he gives you that full confidence. He doesn't even mind hurting the senior players for you to start ahead. Look at uh, the likes of Foden. Look for at how you find Rafael Foden. True. So, John Stones. And Cole, you know. So, Guardiola actually is a very good coach and is, is, is a coach that every young player needs to work with. Okay, let's look at uh, the goals by uh, Michael uh, Hamilton and uh, Oscar Bob. How important would these goals be for their career? I know you deal with younger players also. How important is this goal for these two players, especially on the Champions League night? It's always a dream for every young player to play the Champions League because after the World Cup, next is the Champions, Champions League. League true. So I think it's a very good moral, a moral booster for them, for them to get more opportunities for them to also to be on the on the on the on the, on the, on the, on the news, you know, and also who knows national team. Mm, national team call up. All right, then, congratulations to those two young stars uh, for breaking the dock and scoring two important goals there for uh, Manchester City against Red Star Belgrade. All right, uh, let's quickly move on to other stories. They're making the rounds. We're still talking Champions League football, and uh, it's PSG. Paris Saint-Germain and Porto, they're in the news uh, this morning. The big story says that Paris Saint-Germain and Porto have qualified for the Champions League knockout stages after both have finished their second in their respective competition groups. A relief ecstasy and disdain was etched across the face of PSG players after they qualified uh, for the knockout stages of the competition with the draw for the next uh, round taking place on Monday, December 18 at 11 a.m. in Switzerland. PSG edged their, their way into the round of 16 by the bearers of margins as they drew 1-1 with uh, Borussia Dortmund and Newcastle fell 2-1 against uh, AC Milan at St. Um, James's Park. All right, uh, uh, for PSG and Porto, this is uh, Porto, former winner, um, but PSG is still waiting to win the Champions League. Uh, what are your expectations for these two great teams? So, I mean, I don't see PSG going far. Why? They've still got um, Papi in their, in their fold. Football is no longer a one-man thing. It's a team thing. It's a collective thing. And uh, we all know that PSG is not really giving us what we want. They tried everything possible, okay. signing the world best, Neymar, Messi, before they all left. Now it's all about Mbappé. And we all know Mbappé can do it all alone. So I think uh, Porto, I give them hedge to qualify. But PSG, I don't see them going beyond the stage they have. All right, uh, still talking matters. Uh, let's get into the transfer window now. Uh, we're, we're looking at the story about concerning uh, Rafael Varane. Varane to leave. Uh, Varane to leave is uh, the next talking point. We have Varane uh, talking about Manchester United defender Varane. Uh, the story says uh, Rafael Varane could open talks uh, with other European uh, clubs in January with uh, his contract at Manchester United set to expire at the end of uh, the season. According to reports, the French World Cup and Champions League winner was hailed as one of the star recruits when he moved to Old Trafford uh, from Real Madrid in 2021. However, has fallen out of favour with current manager Eric Ten Hag. Varane's initial contract was revealed by the club to be a four-year contract. However, the final details of the deal show it actually uh, on a three years uh, with an option of another 12 months. Uh, looking at this one, yes, that's the man on your screen there, Varane. Uh, United aren't uh, believed to be wanting to activate the option and Varane could leave as a free agent in summer in what will be another damning review of the club's uh, recruitment uh, of uh, players. Let's look at uh, Varane. Uh, Varane is, we know he was a quality player in Real Madrid. He was quality for French and in the French national team. What do you think is happening to Rafael Varane? 
for the end of your name's sake? <laughs> well, I think um, age one. Uh, maybe the pace in Premier League is too much for him and it's too high. The tempo, you know, we all know is the most difficult league in the world. But if, I'm a, if, I'm, if I happen to be Man U, Manchester United coach, I don't see the reason why I would be benching a player of that top, top quality. He's a top player. He won the Champions League. He won the World Cup. And uh, I think the problem is that Ten Hag, I don't think he knows how to handle big players. It's always a problem for him to manage big players. And that is the problem they are facing in Manchester United. Uh, and and uh, for Ten Hag, do you think he's likely to be sacked? Because we've been hearing lots of stories about uh, the, the, the bad form of Manchester United. He had had issues with Ronaldo, Jano Sancho, uh, Ganacho, and now Varane. If you're not doing well, coaches are meant to be hired and fired if you're not meeting out to demand. So you expect him to be fired soon? He should be fired. All right, uh, let's see what's going to be uh, playing out as regards uh, Veran. If Veran will be leaving Manchester United or if coach Ten Hag uh, will be the one that will be fired, is uh, left to be seen as regards uh, what's going to happen in uh, Manchester U United. All right, uh, let's... Uh, Talk about some local stories uh, before uh, we get back uh, to the foreign scene. Uh, Coach, let's talk about uh, some things happening at uh, uh, Refined Nuggets. What has been the updates recently in terms of, because the last time we spoke, we talked about some players uh, moving, even uh, when it had to do with female football. Uh, to the glory of God, one of my players, female Augustina, signed a contract with uh, India Rattles. And they played yesterday with Atlant Queens. I was yeah. there live at Agumi Rossi. It ended 0 0. And we all know the coach of Nigeria happens to be the World Cup coach, Bankole Olo of the under 17 national team, who happens to be a colleague and a friend. And our refined nugget since ever, ever since we won the Abuja Kids Soccer League, you know, it has been a massive progress. And to the glory of God, we, I personally just opened a branch at Mitama. Okay. So, and uh, this weekend, I'm um, also taking some of the under 10 and under 13 boys on a starting program. Uh, it has been good. Okay, let's uh, look at under age football in Nigeria so far for the Golden Eagles. Uh, uh, we've not really been hearing a lot of positives uh, lately. We missed uh, the last uh, World Cup. Nigeria was nowhere to be found, which is very unusual for a country that has won a almost three uh, different uh, age World Cup, 85, uh, Japan 93. Uh, what do you think is happening to Nigerian uh, under age football? I could have invited you, invited you to a program last two weeks. FIFA came to Nigeria, representative of FIFA. So we discussed about the uh, grassroots development. I was there, Coach Austin Eguavon, who is the current technical advisor to the NFF, was there. Our current president was there too, the NFL president was there, general secretary was there, that is Mohamed Sanusi, with some top coaches. It was a, a scheme, it was a program for grassroots development in Nigeria and how to get it right. Now the NFL and FIFA are planning to work with the academies in Nigeria, both from the local, both from the trenches, when I mean trenches, teams, academies that are not well sponsored so because yeah. What FIFA president, what Those our the and villages. What, what, yeah, villages, what our NFI president said was that most of these good players don't have financial backup and support. That there are a lot of talent out there, but there is no money to finance these kids. So from next year, officially, NFF wants to partner with academy, like mine, another academy, to see how we can, you know, pick and discover these talents, you know, there are some talents that are not yet discovered by the NFL. Through the help of with the grassroots coaches, you know, we can actually bring them to the uh, limelight. What, what, what's in, in the partnership with the NFL, what uh, is the NFL going to be giving to uh, academies like yours to help the scouting program? Because uh, to scout players is no easy feat. Uh, you know, that was still the first phase of the meeting. By next year, NFF, they are still going to call coaches and our stakeholders to come back so that we can discuss further to see what is on ground. 
Okay, uh, just briefly in terms of uh, challenge, what has been the challenges in setting up, uh, you know, all these academies and how has it been the response from the communities, uh, players coming in for, you know, trials? Uh, the thing, the issue, the problem has always been finance. You know, with money you can be mobile, mobility is number one. And also having this money to, you know, to give out the equipment, the necessary equipment. When, what, what I mean by equipment is like giving these kids the right boats, the right training facility, the right programs and, um, you know, teaching them the basics of football. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, enough of that. Uh, but uh, just before we leave there completely, uh, looking at uh, uh, the Super Eagles and ahead of uh, uh, the Nations Cup coming up uh, for you, are you impressed with our, our journey so far? So far, so good. Uh, we are doing well. It's not, you know, it's not always an easy ride when it comes to African football. You know, it's man-to-man -man kind of a thing. And uh, at least you see technicality when teams, African teams are playing Brilliant. each other. But whenever we are playing those outside the country, the foreign, the Europeans, it's always a different ball game. All right, uh, let's uh, run back uh, to the foreign scene and uh, continue some other very uh, big stories that uh, are the rounds. I will take you to the foreign scene and let's take you to Old Trafford. We've got some news there uh, coming from Old Trafford that is of interest to all Manchester United fans. It says uh, uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe uh, could uh, replace uh, Ten Hag. Uh, with uh, Graham Potter if the Dutch manager cannot turn around the misfortune of Manchester United. That's uh, the big headlines there coming. It says uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, yeah, that's uh, Raf Ratcliffe there, could look uh, to replace uh, Eric Ten Hag uh, with Graham Potter. Graham Potter was a former coach of uh, Brighton and Chelsea. That's Ten Hag there. That man could be replaced. Uh, with uh, Graham Porter when he takes uh, control of football operations at uh, Manchester United, according to a uh, report. Uh, the Union's uh, Bologna, okay, that's Graham Porter there. Union's Bologna is uh, thought to have met uh, with former Chelsea head coach as part the Sun and rates uh, the ex uh, Brighton uh, coach uh, highly. Uh, let's, let's look at these two coaches, uh, Ten Hag. Uh, when he was in Ajax in, Manch uh, in, uh, in the Dutch League, he did very well with Ajax, took them to almost the semi-final of, of the Champions League. Uh, but fast forward him coming to United, has not been able to deliver the goods. Graham Potter was amazing with Brighton, and when he, uh, Chelsea brought him up, he failed disastrously he with failed Chelsea. Woefully. woefully with Chelsea. Uh, looking at both coaches, uh, is this the best uh, the man you can do? Should this person <laughs> please Ten Hag. I'm not a Mayu fan, but I prefer Ten Hag to remain than Porter. Porter is, is always, is always uh, <laughs> experimenting. And at this stage, you need, a, you need a, I think the problem of Mayu is not even the coach. Look at the coaches that came in after the retirement of Sir Alice Ferguson. Yeah. These are top coaches. These are good coaches. Ronaldo complained of something. Uh, what was that? Mode of training, the facility, and the changing of board. The, the, the playing staff, okay? The board. You know, the board. There are some coaches that are, were in Manu Academy that are no longer in the team again. These are coaches that understand the tradition of Manchester United. The days of Salis Ferguson, from nowhere you see a younger player coming in from the academy and delivering. Look at the likes of Rashford. Can you be proud of any grassroots player from Manchester United Academy that is currently doing well. No, you have to go back to the drawing board. The problem is not the coach. All the coaches, if you line all these coaches, if you look at their list, these are top coaches that has, they have all done well in their former clubs. What is the problem? Right, uh, that's a, a, a big question. But for you uh, as a coach, looking at the quality of players, we have Sancho who was doing well in Borussia Dortmund. Uh, we had uh, uh, Amar Bratz who was doing well in Florentina, uh, Casmero from uh, Real Madrid. Uh, these players brought into Manchester United. Shouldn't Manchester United be a better team? I can and tell you categorically that if the likes of Moreno yes. should come to back to Manchester United, he's going to win the league. Ten Hag is always having problem with big players. As a coach, you are meant to be in good times with all these players. These players, they have their own platform. 
Okay. These players, they do communicate. Players can gang up against you and make the job difficult for you. It should be in good times with the players. You need the players. Look at what Villa Boas did then when he was in Chelsea. He was benching the likes of Drogba. He was benching the likes of John Terry. Experimenting with younger players, thinking he's going to achieve results. But no. Ego. It's ego. He was, he, was, he was so proud. But when Di Matteo came in, Chelsea won the Champions League. We just few about three months. Inter when he took over. He won the Champions League. He had to bring out these senior players. Talk to them. Come, let's do this. Let's play for the badge. The problem is the coach. He doesn't know how to manage big players. He should work on his ego. Calm down. Talk to this man. These are top players. These are quality players. Right, uh, let's hope uh, uh, Ten Hag will do the needful uh, because our coach number believes that the problem is with Ten Hag and not uh, his uh, playing staff. So let's see how that is going to pan out. Uh, let's quickly look at uh, the world of boxing. Anthony Joshua uh, is in the news that this morning. Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder agree a deal uh, for their bout. That's uh, the big story just hitting us from the world of boxing. Anthony Joshua uh, is in the news. Let's give you the story that Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder uh, have a deal in place to meet in a long a weighted clash on March 9, 2024, according to reports. Okay, so now you know in March 9, 2024, Anthony Joshua of Nigeria will be clashing with John Wilder. The two heavyweights uh, have been uh, circling one another for years, but boxing fans have had uh, to be contented with uh, the news that uh, Wilder and Joshua would be featured on the same card, but not against uh, one another. That's strange. All right, uh, instead, both of the fighters will headline an upcoming uh, day of reckoning on December 23rd in Saudi Arabia. Joshua will set to square off uh, with Otto Wallin, uh, while uh, Wider will go to to two with New Zealand's uh, Josh, Joseph uh, Parker. All right, uh, these two, yes, they're not likely to meet each other, but their the respective rivals, uh, what will be your expectation? Because if they do win this fight, then both of them can uh, meet. Do you think uh, Anthony Joshua is ready to win fights so? now? Yeah, he yeah, has actually lost, I think, twice. Because. So I think he's going to win this. And he has been working on the ground. But actually won that fight. AJ with the... With, uh, what was his well, nickname it, again? There's this nickname. Uh, it's the Bomb, Bomb, yes, whatever, uh, the bronze, bo bom bronze Bomber. Something like yes, that. So I actually want the fight to happen. And uh, let's see what will happen in 2014. Okay, 2024, let's see uh, if that fight, uh, Anthony Jota will be able to get back on his feet and win an uh, important uh, uh, fight against uh, Deontay Wider, who had lost uh, previously to Tyson uh, Fury. All right, uh, from uh, the world of boxing, let's run into the exciting world of a car race. We call it Formula One. And uh, we are doing Formula One this one. Max Verstappen is uh, in the news uh, this morning. The big story from the Formula One uh, circuit uh, says uh, Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez were giving the heroes a welcome at Red Bull's uh, Milton headquarters on Wednesday as they returned uh, to celebrate their Formula One success with the rest of uh, the team. Verstappen stormed uh, to his third uh, straight uh, driver's world championship title by winning 19 out of 22 races while Red Bull also claimed uh, the constructors uh, championship. It was a more difficult uh, campaign for Perez, who started the season brightly before struggling uh, to regain his previous form, uh, but still managing to finish runners up uh, in the championship standings behind uh, Verstappen and the Red Bull continued a strong uh, hold of Formula One was celebrated by the garage uh, wider team at the, their UK base with uh, the pair enjoying a deserved homecoming. All right, uh, that's uh, talking about uh, Formula One there and the stories uh, concerning uh, Formula One. All right, uh, let's uh, uh, come back home and look at uh, other issues that uh, we would like to discuss about concerning uh, the Super Eagles. Uh, uh, some people have called for, let's look at the Super Eagles for the sake of Pissarro saying, uh, thus far we cannot say this is the style 
of uh, the Super Eagles. This is how they play. They don't have a pattern and uh, they are not confident that Pichero can win the Cup of Nations uh, at Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, I won't say they should sack him and I will also want a situation whereby after sacking him we'll start going back to square one. You know, when you are building a team, when a coach is building a team, bring, inviting different kind of players, you know, it takes time to gel. And once you sack a coach, another new coach is also trying to, you know, bring yeah. his own style of play, play yeah. inviting different players. So the Cup of Nations is near. I would just want us to, like, encourage him, talk to him, bring in some technical gurus. You know, we have some good coaches in this country. Those with experience, some are ex-internationals, to work with him and see how we can bring out the best. Okay, uh, but for the, in terms of the team, uh, some have also complained the fact that he keeps inviting new players. Uh, we cannot pinpoint and say this is uh, Pissero's first 11 of the Super Eagles. Uh, for you, do you think that's a problem or that should be uh, something of benefit to the Super Eagles, the fact that you cannot predict their first 11 lineup? Yeah, one thing you also need to understand is, um, as a coach, some of your first-time players, first 11, sorry, some of them are actually playing Champions League. Okay. You wouldn't want to risk it. Look at what happened to Oshime. He came for national assignment, assignment yeah. and he picked up injury. injuries. Yeah. So some of these players do have a kind of cordial relationship with you, like, coach, please, let me skip this match. I'm going to come for this because of the bigger... Match Picture, yeah, ahead. Yeah. Second, you also have to look at there are some good talents out there that you also need to give them chance for us to see. Because once you fail, Nigerians are going to blame you. Why didn't you go for so 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 player who is the highest goal scorer in so 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 league? Look at Paul Noche when he mm. was banging goals. He came to the national team, he could not deliver. But if the NFF did not write to the club and invite him down to the country, we Nigerians will be clamoring, complaining that why didn't I invite this? Why are they sticking to Yenacho? There was a certain time people were complaining about Yenacho sitting on the bench. But most of the national assignments, he has always been the goal scorer and he has always been giving assists. So there are a lot of things, we also, areas you know, we have to look into before condemning the coach. But talking about Paul Owacho, do you think he was given enough time or there was so much pressure on him to uh, deliver the goods in the first few matches he, he was invited in Nigeria? If you look at the players competing for that top nine, the likes of Osime, Awoni, and uh, Ko, uh, but, def uh, definitely Boniface. have to be under pressure. Now we have Boniface. So if you are playing, every player wants to be on the starting level. And if you are given the opportunity to play, you have to give in your best. And if you are doing well, you can't bench. <laughs> you and I know that as a coach, you can't bench Osime and start Paul. You can't even bench Boniface and start Paul ahead of Boniface because these players are playing top league and they are doing well in their respective clubs. Oops. Okay, uh, uh, let's look at the last uh, department of the Super Eagles as of grave concern to sports analysts. The issue of those, the goalkeeper in between the sticks. Uh, uh, Francis Ozoho has com continually shown that he's not a good goalkeeper. Why is Pissero and the coaching crew of the Super Eagles insistent of Ozoho being in that team? That is something I, I don't really understand. We have good players in the league. Look at the goalkeeper of... Uh, Yimba, a very good goalkeeper. Look at the keeper of Atland, a very good goalkeeper. This team from Lagos too. Sporting Lagos? Sporting, a very good goalkeeper. So we, should give, we should give opportunity to these goalkeepers. Remember, most of our great keepers do come from the league. Yeah, the okay. likes of Enyama and Ko, Ikesha Romo and Ko. Peter Rufai going back to the base. Vicente Yama. You know, Vicente Yama. Yeah. So we should actually go back to the grassroots and discover these players, these goalkeepers that are hungry for Sussex. Sticking to a player that a goalkeeper that is always committing blunder year in, day in, day out. Uh, it's too much. It's too much. Look at, it's still hot today that we could not make it for the last World Cup, World Cup. due to the outside shot at the MK Wabiola Stadium against Ghana. So we need, we need to we need to scout for good goalkeepers because Uzo, his blunder is just getting too much and he's pissing off. I even heard that Yama is about to come back to 
So the Super Eagles, to uh, hope the Super Eagles or something. As a goalkeeper I trainer. I don't know if it is a goalkeeper trainer or as a goalkeeper, but I, I would even prefer Yama to come back and mount the post for us. All right, uh, we've been uh, looking at issues, uh, making the rounds, and uh, uh, my guest on today's edition is no other person but uh, the head coach or chief coach, depending which you like, uh, of uh, the Refined Nuggets uh, Football Club right here in the Federal Capital Territory. They were champions of the uh, under-10 Abuja, Abuja Kids, Kids uh, League recently, and uh, they've been doing great things. Also, talking about female football. Yes, before we go, let's uh, just say a little bit about uh, Aziza Toshuala. Yes, she, she, did, she did win uh, the sixth award, but should that be the final for Aziza? And would you say she truly has shown that poise when it comes to the national team? I really don't think that is the final for her. Just like you're saying, if that is the final for Lionel Messi, Leon Messi. If you look at the age, both of them are not on the same age bracket. Messi is ahead when it comes to age. So another thing is I see Aziz at, you know, claiming, winning that for the seventh time again, because one, injury actually stopped her from performing. We all know Aziz at Agbabola. We all know what she's made of with her experience. And if you look at the categories of players that are competing, competing with her, none of them is playing a top flight football. Like in Spain for like, Barcelona. Like, like, but if you look at Aziza, she's playing for Barcelona, and they also won many cups the last season and this new season i believe they are still going to win more no but let's pray she's injury free so that she can continue but, to win but her. for the faculty uh, your expectations uh, chairman can as well, yes you won the super glue but uh, is there a future for the Falcons? there is a big time future for the Falcons because i felt bad that abiodun could not win anything ajibade no not ajibade okay abiodun abiodun okay. our midfielder we call her kante you know, that game is just so awesome. If you actually watch that game at the last qualifying Before match, I think against Cape Verde or something. Cape Verde, yeah. Uh, she was just the general box to box marking, playing like Pillow, you know, playing as. I call her Pillow Kante. You know, she's the distributor, she's a boy user, and uh, the guy is just so phenomenal. phenomenal. Okay, so uh, that's uh, how much uh, time is going to allow us to take on today's edition. We've been talking about all the things called sport, uh, boxing. Uh, we talked about uh, the issue about uh, our striker, Victor Shime, who is most likely, according to reports from uh, Italy, saying he might uh, pen a new deal with uh, Napoli, meaning he's not going nowhere. Uh, but meanwhile, Chelsea asked the uh, Agoni for his uh, signature. Uh, we also look at uh, other issues concerning the UEFA Champions League and all that uh, uh, made the rounds. Uh, Newcastle losing uh, to AC Milan and Samuel Chukwese of Nigeria did score that winning goal. So congratulations to Samuel uh, Chukwese. So coach, I want to say thank you very much uh, for joining us on today's edition of the program Talk Sports. Pleasure to be here. All right, Ed, so that's how we call it a wrap on today's edition. Join me tomorrow for another interesting edition of the program Talk Sport as we highlight all the big stories making the rounds in basketball, football, tennis, golf, and uh, Formula One, of course. And not forgetting, we highlight uh, issues concerning Nigerian players abroad. My name is Anthony Momodu, the king of sports.